It's been a busy last 24 hours for the Boston Red Sox. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. Over the last 24 hours, the Red Sox have done a bit of reshuffling with their bullpen after yesterday's loss to the Cleveland Guardians. It felt like after that loss in particular, there needed to be some reshuffling done. Well, today and last night, they added in some different players for their depth and some new faces to the 26-man roster. So what we're going to do in the second video today, if you missed the series recap on the Guardian series, that link is in the description down below. Below. In the second video, though, we are going to be going over the trade that was made, the call up that happened, and how it all impacts the 2024 team. But before we get into that, do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Don't forget, we are also available on Spotify if you want to listen on the go. Link is in the description down below. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start by breaking down the trade that took place, depending on how you look at it, either early this morning or late last night, that was announced by Christopher Smith of Mass Live, and that was the Boston Red Sox acquiring righty Vladimir Gutierrez from the Milwaukee Brewers. The Red Sox didn't give up any prospects to get him, it was just straight cash considerations, which I guess is nice, right? You don't have to give any other any prospects up to bring anyone else in. Always a little bit of a win when all you have to give up is cash. Cash. This is a really interesting pickup for the Boston Red Sox because, to be honest with you, I don't really know what kind of path Vladimir is going to take now that he's in the Boston Red Sox system. Because he does have some major league experience, his only full season in MLB was back in 2021 where he had a 474 ERA in 22 starts for the Reds, a little bit of a higher FIP at 522, nothing insanely high, right? He was getting a little bit lucky on the mound, but it wasn't like he was getting unbelievably lucky or unbelievably unlucky out there and that led to an ERA plus of 99 which is basically right around league average it's one tick below the average pitcher in the game he was essentially a league average pitcher in his one full season in major league baseball and that was as a starter now since then he hasn't really seen a lot of time in the majors he had about 37 innings in 2022 for the Reds where he did looked much worse than he did in 21 a 761 ERA with a 682 FIP so he was getting a bit unlucky on the mound there but still it wasn't by much and he certainly still was putting up a lot of bad numbers with a 58 ERA plus again much lower than the average pitcher in Major League Baseball now he didn't spend any time at the Major League level in 2023 but he has a little bit in 2024 already where he started the year with the Miami Marlins he spent four innings there he gave up three runs and struck out four then he was DFA'd from Miami picked up by Milwaukee DFA'd by Milwaukee and now he's on the Boston Red Sox. He was optioned down to AAA Worcester after joining this team and, and was added to the 40-man roster by sending Trevor Story to the 60-day IL. Not really any surprise there. It is technically a roster move, but I mean, clearly we all knew he would be, end up on the 60-day at some point, right? My best guess right now is that they see something they may be able to tweak a bit in hopes that he could add some rotational depth down in AAA. His off-speed pitches look like they have a pretty good amount of movement. Maybe it's a location issue or something within his mechanics that they believe they, if they can get on the right track, he could be a fairly productive 7th, 8th type option for the Boston Red Sox. With already two players down in the Red Sox rotation and it being only April, it's probably a good idea to acquire anyone you can in hopes that you are able to add some depth if there are further injuries, right? It's never a bad idea to take a flyer on a guy like Vladimir who had, I guess, some success at the major league level. He was a league average pitcher. I think if people start to go down in this rotation any further, you'd take a league average pitcher who could at least eat innings. So, yeah, I don't think this is a terrible idea. In my opinion, ultimately, what this trade is going to boil down to is it's going to be one of those trades where one of three outcomes happen. Either one, we make this video about Vladimir, we never talk about him again, right? He struggles in AAA, he gets DFA'd midway through the season, and we just, we totally forget that Vladimir was at one point a part of the Boston Red Sox system. The second one is that he does end up coming up because something drastic happened and ends up surprising a lot of people. He 
comes up here and maybe they do end up fixing him and this is someone that fills a big role for the Red Sox for a couple of weeks while say a Garrett Whitlock's dealing with an oblique strain or Nick Pavetta is trying to make his way back from a flexor injury, right? That could be one of the outcomes in the third one. Well, Kyle Bear is a good example of that where he comes up once, gets absolutely shelled and then we never hear from him again. I think it's one of those three things. I don't think he'll ever be a major part of this organization. I don't think they're trying to make him a major part of this organization. It is a small trade. It's probably an insignificant trade, but it is one that could at some point impact this team, especially with the injuries we're seeing early on. However, this wasn't the only move the Boston Red Sox made over the last 24 hours in regards to their pitching, and this one I think is going to have a little bit more of an immediate impact. The other thing the Red Sox did is they have decided to call up one Cam Boozer. Now, we actually made a video on why the Red Sox need to call up Cam Boozer just a couple of days ago. So I guess good timing on my part. It wasn't really my idea. I've been seeing it all over the place. This was something that I think a lot of Red Sox fans who pay attention to AAA Worcester wanted to see at some point. But if you never really heard of Cam or if you haven't seen my video on him yet, here's a couple of things you need to know. He is a power-throwing left-handed reliever who regularly hits high 90s with his fastball. He's got a couple of wipeout pitches and this year for the Worcester Woo Sox he has an ERA of 270 and 6 and 2 thirds innings with both of those earned runs that he has on his docket in his first two outings. Since then he's been absolutely lights out. He's striking out an absurd 60% of the batters he is facing right now while only walking 4%. I like that com combination a whole lot. I don't know about you guys, but it does sound like a recipe for success to me. I, I think this is a really smart move by Boston. I we talked about it before. Joelli's not really giving you anything at all all. Joe Jakes has already been optioned down to Worcester again. He gave you nothing. Brandon Bernardino will obviously give you something. He looks just like he did last year, which is going to be extremely important for the Red Sox, but because of these injuries to the rotation, you're probably going to be using Bernardino in more of a bulk opener role than a late inning hey, we got a couple lefties coming up here. We really need to get the ball from Cutter Crawford's hands to Chris Martin's hands. Who are we going to put in there? Well, now that role becomes Cam Boozer, and it gives you a bit more versatility in the bullpen. What I also like about this is that Boozer is just a really cool story. For those of you who don't know, he was drafted by the Twins way back in 2013. I know saying way back in 2013 is kind of wild, but he pitched in their system for a while. They tried to make him a left fielder. It just wasn't working out. He had some off-field issues. He ended up quitting the game and taking some time off and then coming back to the game through independent ball to end up on the Boston Red Sox, so it's pretty cool to see him probably making his major league debut in the next couple of days. He's worked really hard for it. I hope this is someone who really works out. Brandon Bernardino is a similar case, and he is just a fantastic guy to root for. I would love to see Cam Boozer succeed at the major league level. In response to this, like I said, in order to get him onto the 26-man roster, they sent down Joe Jakes. In order to get him on the 40-man roster, Cam Boozer is not on the 40-man roster. I don't exactly have that information yet. I'm probably making this video, I would guess, an hour or two before this information does come out. So once it does, I'll let you know in the comment section down below. It'll be the pinned comment. But what I will say is right now, the consensus idea is that one of two things is about to happen. Either Joe Jakes gets DFA'd, which... I don't think any of us would be super upset by except for our good friend Andrew Parker, who I'm sorry, dude, it might be time for Joe Jakes to go. He could probably slip through the waiver wire as well, or they have a couple of options for their 60 day IL. They could move Brian Mata to the 60 day, which would give the Red Sox a little bit more time with him on the IL before they have to make a decision there. Or they could go with Brandon Walter, who started the year injured for the Woo Sox as well. So there are a couple options here for Cam Boozer. I think it's going to be one of those three. But either way, he will be an immediate impact guy on the Boston Red Sox, probably tonight, if not within the next couple of days. Overall, you look at these moves, it's nothing really crazy, right? It's nothing super crazy noteworthy to pay attention to. Obviously, Cam Boozer is the biggest news here just because it's probably going to have a bigger impact on the Red Sox and someone we are going to see the immediate impact of pretty quickly on here. As for Vladimir, like I said, this could very easily be a name that we never mentioned again. However, I have said that a couple of times about different guys, specifically Cooper Criswell, who ended up serving a pretty important role for the Red Sox here early on in the 2023 season. And I'm wrong all the time. So maybe I'm wrong about this one. 
Either way, I know they're small moves. I know they sort of feel like they're insignificant, but you never know who's going to be making an impact on this team. So I want to make sure that you guys get all the information that you possibly can so you can form your opinions about what's going on with the Red Sox. So yeah, I think these moves are important in terms of what the Red Sox overall picture is looking like. They're not important in terms of maybe the day-to-day -day baseball we see on the field, but in terms of the overall thought process of both this front office and the organization as a whole, I think there is some information to pull here, and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think? What do you think about the trade? What do you think about the promotion of Cam Boozer? Do you like either? Do you like one? Do you like both? Or do you not like either of these at all? Do you hate both of these moves? Let me know what you think and why in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, like I said in the intro, we talk Sox content almost every single day. Plus, you made it to the end here. You might as well hit that sub button. You also might as well hit that like button as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you all in the red seats.